Good morning, my name is Barb Molera and I'm with Harvesting History, an upstate New York heirloom horticultural company that specializes in flower, vegetable, and herb seeds, flower bulbs, flower tubers, and sets of all kinds. Today we're going to be talking about growing potatoes in tires. The first thing you need to know about growing potatoes, whether they're in tires or plastic bags or in the earth itself, is that you have to cut your potato into chunks that have at least two to three eyes. This is a potato eye, so this particular chunk has two eyes. This chunk, which is an entirely different shape, also has two different eyes, and you can see the eyes are beginning to sprout. The size of the potato chunk doesn't matter, but the fact that you've cut the potato chunk does, because you have to let this surface, this flesh surface, dry and dry completely before you plant the potato. If you were to take this piece of potato, it has no eyes, and so therefore it is unlikely you're going to get much in the way of a plant. This chunk, however, should produce some very fine potato plant only if you remember to leave this to dry. And that's a minimum of 24 hours. It may take 48 hours. It may take 72 hours, depending on what the weather. But you need to let these surfaces dry completely before you plant this potato. The first thing after you have dried your potato chunks that you then need to be concerned about once you are have decided that you're going to grow potatoes in tires is the soil mix. It's a very simple soil mix. It's the cheapest soil you can find, which can be crummy backyard soil. If you can't get your hands on crummy backyard soil, then something like this topsoil mixed with some peat moss is a very satisfactory soil mix. So you do about 60% topsoil or crummy backyard soil and mix that with about 40 percent peat moss. The next step in this process of building a potato garden out of tires is to choose a tire. Now this is a great size. You don't want gigantic tires because that's going to require more soil. So this is a good size tire to begin with. Don't let that fat little doughboy of a Michelin man tell you Michelin tires are better for potato gardens than Firestones or any other. Any tire will work. This is a great size. So the next thing that you're going to do after you fill the entire tire with soil, remember 60% crummy backyard soil or topsoil and 40% peat moss, the next thing you're going to do is place your potato chunks in that soil. Now, it does not matter how you place these chunks in the soil. You could even place them upside down if you were dumb enough to do that, but the best thing is to try to place them so that the eyes are up or that the eyes are headed up. So either of these configurations are gonna be fine. Now, I know my gardeners and they're thinking, well, if two chunks are good, then four chunks are even better. No, they're not. You can put one or two chunks in a tire and get a reasonable crop. If you put four chunks in the tire, you may not get any potatoes whatsoever. So the next step, after we've placed the chunks in the tire, is to get another tire and gently place it on top of the first tire. And now I'm going to fill this second tire with the same soil mixture up to the top of the tire. Okay. This can take a while, so be patient. Uh, we have to fill this whole second tire with the soil mix. Okay, so we began by filling the bottom tire with soil, and then we placed the potato chunks on top of that soil on top of that soil in the bottom tire. Then we put a second tire on top of the first tire and we filled it with soil. So we totally covered the chunks that are on the top of the soil in the bottom tire. Now we are going to put a third tire 
on our tire tail. We're going to put this third tire on, but not until we see sprouts from the potato plant coming through the second tire. You will begin to see the potato plant leaf out in a matter of weeks. The leaves will come through the soil. When you see that, you're going to take and put a third tire on the tower, and then you're going to fill the third tire with firmly packed straw. Not hay, not pine so straw, not shavings, firmly packed straw. And you're going to fill this entire tire with firmly packed straw. The potato plant, not to be outdone, will continue to grow and come through that straw. And when you see it come through the straw in this tire, then you're going to take and put a fourth tire on your tower. And you're going to let, you're going to fill the fourth tire with firmly packed straw. And you're going to let the potato come grow up through this fourth tire and begin to leaf out again. Now you can actually add a fifth tire and a sixth tire if you want. But in your first year of trying this, I think I would just stick with four tires. Remember that potatoes form along the stem of the potato plant. So the more the stem is covered, the more potatoes you may actually get in your harvest. If you prefer new potatoes, then what you're going to do is once the potato plant has leafed out and grown to about this tall, it will actually bloom. When those blooms fade, you wait two weeks and then you take the first tire off and you spread out the straw and you will find luscious baby potatoes all in that first tire. That's how you get your new potatoes. When you harvest the mature potatoes, that will come at the end of the season. And at the end of the season, the frost will totally kill the upgrowth of the potato plant. And what you will do then is wait another two weeks after the potato plant is totally dead. You'll wait another two weeks and you will remove the tires one at a time and harvest the potatoes off of the stem. If you continue to add soil rather than straw, you will have a gigantic mess at the end. So the easiest way to keep the mess down is to, after the first two tires, to just use straw to mulch around your potato plant. Potato towers are not known for their architectural integrity. And it may be that your homeowners association is very unhappy with you putting to potato towers out where the rest of your neighbors can see them. Uh, if you need to still place them in front of your home, I would suggest decorating them. There are actually decorating contests for potato towers or rimming them with some picket fencing, something like that. But be aware that uh, not all homeowners associations want to see the neighborhood uh, decorated with potato towers. Harvesting History has a superb collection of heirloom variety potatoes, both fingerlings and standard potatoes. I heartily encourage you to come to our website, www.harvesting-history.com and pick out a few varieties for yourself. I think you'll be delighted with the products that we have and uh, I think you'll be one happy gardener trying to grow potatoes in potato towers. Good luck.